Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer Moran, professional psychic. And in this video, we're going to be doing a pick a card spread about what is keeping you from finding love, the love of your life, your soulmate. This is obviously from a single peeps. So if you're interested in that, stick around. If you like my videos on YouTube, then I think you would enjoy a private reading with me even more. And you can find the link to that in the description box below. All right, guys. So in this reading, we're going to be finding out what is keeping you from your finding your true love. What obstacles are in your way? What is the thing that you may or may not be doing that is causing dilemmas or problems in your life in this area? We're going to start out with these three decks of cards that we have. This is deck number one with this amethyst. This is deck number two with this little jade froggles. And this is deck number three with this green stone, which I don't know what it is. So we're going to go and see what's going to happen. So let's start out with deck number one with this amethyst. Okay, guys. So for fun, I brought in this other card deck. We never really use that. So I'm just, I'm just going to put that to save the best for last. Let's see what's keeping you from, oh, okay. What's keeping you from finding love. And now we're just going to turn this one up. Okay. Let's see where we can put that one. Everything in good, good. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see this. I think you can. What is keeping you from the one that is, or what is keeping you from, three, two, one. All right, you guys, here's the deal. I feel like you are too embroiled in your past and too embroiled in your family dynamics. I feel like your family has been really challenging. Growing up was not easy. I feel like you have a lot of guilt and a lot of feelings of being stuck with your family and in your family dynamics. I feel like when, you know, children are very impressionable. And if you grow up in a family that is toxic, that you're dealing with a lot of people who have negative emotions, if you've never seen or experienced a happily married couple or a couple in a happy relationship, you don't know how to understand what that is like. If you grew up in a situation where you didn't get positive re uh, reinforcement and, you know, self-esteem building, you don't know how to have that for yourself. It's, it can be very, very challenging. And what I'm seeing in this spread for you is that you're very tied into your family's way of thinking. You're, you find yourself quoting them a lot. You may be even hanging out with them a lot, but either way, they're affecting your way of thinking. And our families, whether they know it or not, they do imprint their beliefs on us. And we do tend to carry around a lot of negative beliefs. If you grew up in a household where your mom was saying things like, oh, there's no good men, or, you know, men all cheat, or, you know, you're never going to really find love. There's no such thing as love, or, you know, love leaves, or love fades, or, you know, things like that. That is going to imprint on you over time. And that negative kind of um, energy has really attached itself to you firmly. Now we're going to go over to this card here. And this card is talking about basically how you take a lot of your emotions and you shove them underneath, like to get through your day. You're a hard worker. You're very dedicated to your job. You're very dedicated. And in order to do what you need to do to function, you take a lot of those insecurities, the vulnerabilities and the hurt feelings, and you shove them down under so that you don't have to deal with them. And so that is definitely also causing problems because if you're not open hearted and you're not willing to feel love and experience love, there's a part of you that is on a daily basis pushing love away because you're afraid of it. You say things to yourself like, well, I'm better off alone. I'm used to being alone. I've been single for a long time. I don't know if anybody would want to put up with me. I don't know if I could ever put up with anybody else. You know, you say these things to yourself a lot and it becomes like a script that you just keep repeating on autopilot. And I think that there's a part of you that is afraid to let go and actually be in a relationship with somebody because you're so afraid of that because it's so foreign to you. It's like if I said, oh, we're going to go move you to Mars. You've never been on Mars before. So the thought of Mars is so scary and strange and foreign. And the thought of a loving, healthy relationship is just as strange and scary and foreign to you. So there's a lot of negative self-talk that your family imparted on you. And then there's a lot of negative self-talk that you continue to impart on yourself. You can tell yourself that you don't want a relationship or that you don't need a relationship. But the truth is, you want one and you deserve one and you shouldn't be 
afraid of it or feel like you don't deserve it or feel like it's not going to happen. So you have a lot of internal work to doing. And I want to talk about this card right here, this mountainous card right here. This is about your obstacles, this big mountain that is standing in front of you. You have taken so much time to put on so much body armor to protect you that when you're out in the street, when you're out in public, when you're at your job, you're just so covered with all this armor. It's like, don't talk to me. Nobody bother me. Leave me alone. I don't need you. I don't need any of this. I don't want this. You're just, you're, you're covering yourself with all of this armor. And it's like, you don't want anybody to look at you or pay attention to you. And you don't want to let anybody in because you're afraid of that vulnerability. So that's why you put on all this armor every day. This is why you're single. All of these things combined is a big problem, but it's a problem that you can completely solve. None of this stuff is insurmountable for you. You are a strong person. You're extremely focused. And when you have a task that you want to achieve, nothing can stop you from achieving that task. You need to take all of that energy and that tenacity and focus it inward on yourself so that you can work on healing some of these things. Maybe start journaling doing some meditations, maybe think about seeing a therapist. But, you know, a lot of these negative coping mechanisms and beliefs are not based on reality. They're just based on one person's experience. And it doesn't mean that you have to live the rest of your life in that same trap because of somebody else's experience. It's like if I said to you that you should never eat olives because they're, you know, I don't know, they're gross or something. And then you never eat olives and olives are delicious. Like don't, don't hide that from yourself. So this last card is about service. And this to me ties into a lot of guilt. I think that deep down subconsciously, there's a part of you that feels guilty to do something for yourself, feels guilty to deviate from the plan of the rest of your family and your upbringing. Like, well, who am I to think that I can have a good relationship when none of them have had good relationships? And what makes me think that I could be that special? And, you know, there's a lot of guilt that you feel and, and you feel stuck in, and you know, this guilt is self-inflicted. It's, it's really self-inflicted. And this may be a symptom of you really having to be more of a parent to your, to your own parent and being responsible for stuff, um, at a younger age than you really needed to. And when I say responsible for stuff, I'm not talking about chores, but I'm talking about maybe your parents went to you as a counselor or went to you to ask for advice or break up fights or something like that. And that's stuff that you know, no kid should have to deal with. But I think that you were responsible for dealing with your parents' emotional needs when they should have been dealing with yours. I'm not trying to down your parents or, or you know, anything like that. You know, people make mistakes and you, you're kind of the product of your raising and they're the product of their raising. So I'm not trying to blame your parents or say your parents are bad people, but I'm saying that they pass down some negative things to you and it's your time to break the chain and take care of yourself. And I hope this was helpful. I'm feeling like I laid a lot of information out on you and I apologize for that, but start to take after yourself and know that you have this big armor that you need to start chipping away with and you need to start believing in better things for yourself and that it's okay for you to have that. You're not breaking anybody else's heart. You just have to take care of yourself. All right. Deck number two. By the way, all of these are going to be timestamped for you guys. I do the timestamp and it's going to be in the information box. So sometimes I'll find video comments with people timestamping it. I'm like, I already timestamped it. So I don't know if I'm not timestamping it in the right place, but I timestamp everything in the description box. Box. So that was my own little rant. Sorry, guys. Deck number two, this little froggles. So this is what's keeping you from finding a healthy, loving relationship. All right. With you, I feel that you have had failures in the past. You've had relationships. And I feel like you are a very passionate person. You're extremely passionate. You are, let me just try to, I want to always make sure you guys can see these. I know sometimes there's a glare from a circle light. I apologize for that. But um, you basically are in a situation where you basically are in a situation where you've had a relationship in the past and it didn't work out. You put a lot of effort into it. You gave it your all. You really tried hard, tried hard for a lot longer than maybe you should have. And I feel like there was a failure there. And I feel like it's very 
hard for you to try again. And I feel like there's a part of you that is so afraid of getting it wrong. You don't know where to begin. So you don't know who you want to date, who's best for you, you know, who you are attracted to. You don't know your own strengths and weaknesses. You know, you don't know what you bring to the table and what you need to do. I just feel like you're stuck because you want to really badly find the right person. But at the same time, you have just such a fear of trying again, because if you try again, you're afraid of failing again. Here's the thing, you do have to make some little changes and the first thing that I would say is you need to work on your self-esteem. You need to start looking at yourself in the mirror every day and thinking about who you are, what you bring to the table and your good qualities. And if you feel like you don't bring anything to the table then you need to start looking a little bit harder because you are a very loving, caring person. You have a lot of good, uh, you know, you have a good heart, you're, you're fun, you're thoughtful, you're, you know, romantic, you have a lot of good qualities, you just need to start to really like work on yourself a little bit and really start to see that more in yourself and bring those out. And the other thing that I want you to do is start thinking about who your ideal partner is, not who you think like, a lot of times we get caught up in this of who our ideal partner is, because we have this certain thing of it has to be this type of person and this type of career and this type of situation. And, you know, you might think about what your family would think your ideal partner is or what your friends might think your ideal partner is or society might think your ideal partner is. And to be very honest, that that's not always going to be what's best for you. And you have to start exploring and imagining and having a little fun fantasizing about who the right person is for you. So I feel like you, one of the things that you're really good at is being creative. And I feel like it's something that comes naturally to you. So use that creativity to start thinking about the person who is going to be the right person for you. It's almost like you're designing or creating your ultimate perfect love. And when I say perfect, I don't mean like perfect body, perfect, you know, this or that. It's not the idea of going for perfectionism. It's more perfect for you, the person that is going to be the most perfect for you. And that is, you know, start thinking about those things. And if you guys want me to do a video about how to do this, I totally will for you. Uh, we can work on that together and start that together. And if you're interested, just comment below and I will do that video for you. So that's what I'm saying for you. Just start to love yourself more. Really start to, to find a love and appreciation for yourself. Know that it's okay, you know, grieve take the time you need to get past what you've been through and know that you will be able to try again. You're just scared. That's all it is. You're just scared. <laughs> all right, you guys, this is deck number three. Let's see what's going on. What's keeping you from finding the love of your life. Let's see. Okay. Here's what I'm getting. No tea, no shade. But I'm just going to get real with you. <laughs> I feel like you put a lot of effort into everybody else's life. Like you are probably somebody who likes gossiping and you like to know what everybody else is doing. And you probably are the person who is giving everybody else love advice and, and trying to focus on everybody else's stuff. And I feel like you, you do all this to distract. Um, I feel like you... I think that you are afraid to be in a relationship as well. And I feel like it's partially because you're afraid of making a mistake. Like you, I'm just going to be very real with you. Okay. We're friends right now. And I'm going to tell you the truth. You can be a little judgy. And when somebody else that you know gets in a relationship that is not a good relationship, you're just like, mm, I can't believe that she's with him. I can't believe she puts up with that. I can't believe blah, 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 blah. And you, it's easy for you and maybe sometimes a little fun for you to sit there and judge other people and their relationship mistakes. Like, oh, I cannot believe they're together. I cannot believe that they didn't do this, blah, blah, blah. I can't believe she took him back. So I think that there's a part of you that knows that about yourself and is afraid that if you get into a relationship, somebody else is going to judge you. And I feel like, you know, there may be somebody that you have in your life that you have feelings for, but you're afraid to be with that person because you feel like they don't fit into the criteria that you specifically want. And you feel like, well, people are going to judge me for being with this person. And, you know, that's a sad situation. You, you can't, you're never going to make everybody happy. 
People who judge are going to judge. They're going to judge you whether you're with somebody, without somebody. They're going to judge you anyway. So like, who cares? You have to like rise above it and get to the point where you're willing to follow your own heart. I feel like there is somebody that you do want to be with and have feelings for. I'm not telling you that that person is the right person for you necessarily. That would be a different reading. But what I can tell you is you, you, if you have an opportunity to be with somebody and you care about that person and they are a good person and they treat you well, then nothing else should matter. Um, and so I, I just want you to kind of know that it's okay if everybody else is zigging, you can zag and you can't get caught up in the drama or the stress of what other people are going to think. I really, really feel that you can move past this. I think that it's just a matter of sometimes when you're, when you're the one who's not in a relationship and everybody else is, it's easy for you to judge them because you're not in a relationship. So they can't run around and judge you. And so it's easy to sit on your, you know, kind of your throne or your high horse and just be like, Oh, I can't believe them. How stupid. And I don't know. I just think that you're afraid to jump in the pool yourself because you're afraid of yourself making mistakes. But I think that you have to think about all the lessons you've learned from watching other people and and try to cautiously go forward and give yourself permission to meet people and date. And I think for you, the best advice that I can really give you is don't look to jump into a relationship. Just look to, to kind of get to know people and, and give yourself permission to try new things. Um, you're stuck in a box that you put yourself in because you, you, like I said, you're afraid of other people judging you. You're afraid of making mistakes. And I feel like you need to be willing to get out of the box and try new things and meet new people, join groups, take classes, um, you know, go slowly. But I feel like once you kind of get out of your own way in that respect, you'll notice that things will line up for you perfectly. Like I said, my strongest feeling is that there is somebody that you already have in your life that you have feelings for. You're just afraid of being with them for one reason or another. And maybe, you know, I'm not telling you to run into their arms right now, but take some time and just give yourself permission to have some freedom and have some fun and, and figure yourself out. And then maybe once you build your confidence and feel a little less afraid of other people's opinions, you'll have the courage to try to have a relationship with that person um, or somebody else. But that's pretty much what I'm getting for you. Um, I hope I wasn't too harsh on you. I tried not to be, but we all judge people sometimes. It's just part of life. We just, we, everybody likes to gossip. We all get into it. I can't, you know, I'm not going to say that I never gossip or anything. We all do. It's part of life. So that is pretty much it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day and comment below and let me know if you'd like me to do that other video. All right, guys, take care. Love you.